Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you how to make a cute little window card using the brand new stamp set duo called Snowman Wishes, along with the silhouette cameo. The first part of the video will show you how to cut all of the elements that you will need using the Silhouette Studio software and the Silhouette Cameo electronic cutter. If you don't have a silhouette, you can do a similar design using punches and dies to create a window for your snowman to be standing near. And you can fussy cut around the perimeter of the snowman to create a similar look. In the first part of today's video, I'm going to start by showing you how to cut the different components of this card. And I'm going to cut them using the Silhouette Cameo and the Silhouette Studio software. I have all of my Silhouette files that I've either created or downloaded from other sources in a file called Silhouette Cut Files. Let me show you where to find that. On my computer, I would click on File, Open, and there are my Silhouette Cut Files. That happens to be in my documents. The first file I'm going to cut is the Snowman Wishes Cut File. So I'm going to click on that, and there it is. Now I'm going to load a piece of 80 pound Gina K Designs white cardstock onto my mat. And you can also use a scrap of cardstock. You don't need a whole piece. You just have to load it in the same area as you have your design. Then I'm going to click on File, Send to Silhouette, and then I would click on this Cut button that will start the cutting process. I'm not going to do, do that right now because I have these pre-cut for you. I'm just showing you how I got there. The next element that I'm going to cut out is a red window. So I'm going to load a piece of the Gina K Designs Red Hot cardstock onto my cutting mat. And then I'm going to open up this design. Now this is a design I modified. This is called the Window Single Small. When I purchased this particular design from the Silhouette store, it had two windows on it. I just deleted one of the windows from my cutting, and then I resized the window by putting my mouse on this little square here, holding down the shift button, and then moving it to the size that I wanted it to be. And that size happens to be four and a half inches coming down this side. That's how big I wanted it because that fit nicely on my card front. Then what I did was I resaved it just like this as a file because this is a card I want to make over and over again. So once you modify a piece, you can save it again using a different name and then you'll still have the original that you purchased plus you'll have your modified one so that you don't have to do all of that work each time you want to make a card. The next step would be to click on File, Send to Silhouette, and click on the Cut button. Now, one thing that this did not come with, this particular file, when I purchased it from the Silhouette store, is a mat or a backing that's just a little bit bigger than this piece. And I want to cut a mat for this. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to move that over here just a little bit. I want to create a white mat behind this window. So I'm going to load a piece of Gina K Designs 80 pound cardstock onto my cutting mat. Then I'm going to click on the design and I'm going to click on Object and then Trace. Now here I have to click on Select the Trace Area and then using my mouse, I'm going to highlight right around the entire design and click Trace Outer Edge. Okay. Now I can click on the design again and move this one out of the way and then delete it. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because I tried just creating the mat from the original and it wasn't even. But when I traced it first and then created the mat, it was very even. So for this particular design, you need to trace it first. Now my next step is going to be once again to click on the design, click on Object, 
and then I'm going to click on Offset. Now the Offset button is going to create the mat. So I'm going to click up here where it says Offset, and then I'm going to change the size because I want it to be a tighter mat. So I'm going to change the size to 0 0.090 and hit Apply. Now once again I'm going to click in the center and remove my original design and then delete it and you can see I have a mat here that's ready to cut. Now I'm going to also zoom in here because you can see this little area right here I don't want that to cut. So I'm going to click up here on this edit points and then click on this and I'm going to click on one point and then I'm going to delete it. I'm going to click on another point and delete it. And then I'm going to stop and go back to this arrow and check it. Okay, I still have a little bit left there. So I'm going to go back to this edit points, click on a point, let's make sure it's the right point, and then delete it. Now I think I'm going to try to zoom in again here so we can get a little bit closer. There's the last point. I'm going to click on it and delete it. Now I can zoom out again, take a look at that by going back to this piece. Now you can see that that is gone now, so that's going to cut much nicer for me. If I left that little red line there, it would cut on that little red line. So I can zoom out again. And now I'm going to cut this mat. And this mat's just going to be a little bit bigger than that original design, so I'll have a nice white backing on my red window. Now, if you like this design and you don't want to have to redo that each time, you can go up to File, Save As, and I'm going to call this the Window Single Small Mat. Oops, there we go, Mat. And then I'm going to save that. And that'll allow me to pull this up now as a cut file, and I can use that anytime I want if I want to make a mat for that red window. Now my final two pieces, let me delete this. My final two pieces are going to be, I'm just going to create a little box here. And I'm going to do that just using the square tool like you saw me just click on. And I want this box to be a half an inch by two and a quarter inches. So I'm just going to stop it there and then I'm going to click on it again. It's a little bit easier for me to size it up right. It's okay if it's just a little bit bigger or smaller. And two and a quarter inches, let's bring that over this way. That's pretty close. We'll just make it that size. There we go. Okay, so now I have this little box. This box I'm going to cut out in white. But then I want to make an outline for it. So, once again, I'm going to go to Object, Offset, and I'm going to click the Offset button. But I don't want rounded edges this time. I want square edges. So I'm going to change the corner to this one, and that'll square up my corner. And now I can bring this down just a little bit and make it whatever size I want that I think would look nice as a mat going around the outside of my little greeting panel there that I'm cutting in white. So now I can separate these. I'm going to click on that one and just move that one out of the way. And I can cut one in white and one in red. And since they're both pretty small, I'll probably just leave them both on there. I'll cut them both on red, both on white, and then I'll make a reverse one for another card. So now that I have those, I'm going to click on File, Send to Silhouette, and I'm going to cut them. And now we've cut all the elements for the card project that I'm going to show you how to make next. Here are the pieces once they've been cut using the Cameo. And now I'm going to show you how to put this card together. Here are the tools and products you're going to need to make this project. First, you're going to need the Stamp Set Duo Snowman Wishes. And that includes this cute little snowman and 
the little greeting that comes with it. Then you're going to need some Copic markers and the colors that I'm using are R17 and that's lipstick orange, BG32 which is aqua mist, BG10 cool shadow, Y38 which is honey, and BG45 which is Nile blue. You're also going to need an ink pad and I'm using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. This is my favorite ink to use whenever I'm using Copic markers because you don't need to heat set it or anything. You just stamp and it's ready to color. I'm also going to use some adhesive, a quickie glue pen, some scissors, and these are my cutter bee scissors, some quarter inch pop dots, and then I'm going to use some pattern papers. And these are three of the pattern papers from the new Winter Whimsy collection. So I'll be using these to make the card, along with some red hot cardstock and some of our white cardstock. For my card base, I'm using the 120 pound weight cardstock, but for the rest of the pieces, I'm using the 80 pound layering weight. So if you have the cameo and you cut this little snowman image out, then you're ready to stamp. If you don't have the cameo, you can stamp on a piece of 80 pound cardstock and then you can cut around the outside of the snowman. So I'm going to take some memento black ink and ink up this little stamp. And then I'm going to stamp that right onto my design. And you can see that the design is just about the same size as the stamp, so it's pretty easy to see where you're stamping. So there we go. Now I have that cute little snowman. Now I also cut these little panels out. You can remember, this is going to be my greeting panel, and then I'm going to layer it on top of that. So once again, I'm going to ink that up using some black ink and then stamp that onto this little panel. There we go. Winter wishes. Now you can see I stamped that a little bit crooked. Don't worry, there's two sides to every cardstock. So I'm going to flip that over and stamp it again a little bit straighter. I'm going to have to get my head in here possibly so I can see down on it. There we go. So sorry if my hair got in the way. I'm not sure or not. But there we go. Now it's straight. It's pretty easy to stamp it straight if you look straight down on it, but sometimes it's hard to do that when you're sitting down. So when you're actually doing the stamping parts, it's a good idea to stand up. You get a better bird's eye view. All right, now my next step is to color this snowman, but I'm just going to color parts of him. I'm going to color this little part of his hat, his nose, the buttons, and then I'm going to shadow a little bit around him. So I'm going to start with the BG32, the Aqua Mist marker. And I'm going to color in this part of his hat. And then I'm going to use that darker turquoise, that Nile blue. And that is the BG45. And I'm just going to draw a line down each one of these little parts of the hat and that will give it a little bit more depth in there. They're pretty close colors but that kind of deepens it up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Then I'm going to color his nose using the Y38 which is the honey and I'm going to use that red Copic marker, the lipstick orange, which is R17, to color in the buttons. Okay. I'm going to finish up using the cool shadow, which is the BG10, and I'm going to just color around his face, kind of go across there, and around here. This is one of my favorite markers. I use this marker no matter what my color scheme is. I love outlining or lining the inside of an image or around the outside using this marker. It just creates such a neat shadow look. Just makes them look a little more blustery, doesn't it? Can color a little bit more in there. There we 
there we go so there I added just a little bit of depth around that now for the rest of the parts I'm going to do some paper piecing so I'm going to use this red checked uh, pattern paper from the winter whimsy pattern paper collection and I'm going to stamp that using some black ink there we go and my next step is to cut that out so I'm going to cut out the top of the hat this piece of the hat and then the whole scarf but I'm not going to cut the fringe Here are those little pieces now all cut out and I'm going to apply those to the snowman using a quickie glue pen. So the way I do that is I just color in the area using glue just like I was coloring with a marker and then take that little piece and stick it right onto that little guy right in the same spot like that. Isn't that cute? Same here, I'm going to add this little panel. And finally, the scarf. I love paper piecing. It saves you a lot of time. You don't need to color quite as much. And you can get more fabric looks by using pattern papers that look like fabric and Get some really intricate designs. And then that little piece, this is almost like paper dolls or color forms. You remember those when you were a kid? And there we go. Now we have the cute little snowman with his little checked hat and checked scarf. Now the next piece of this design is the window. Now here I have the red window that I cut using the Cameo and then the white panel that I made and that's the layering panel. You can see how nicely those line up together and that was so easy to create. Well I have some pieces of pattern paper here and these are the snowflakes. So I'm going to make the window appear as though it's looking out onto the snow. So I've cut a little panel there like that and then I'm going to take some adhesive and I'm going to run it right up the side here and right up the side there and attach my little snowy background to my window. There we go. Now I tried just laying this on top and I felt like it needed something here so I grabbed a little scrap I'm just going to cut a little piece of that out, kind of in a circle. I'm going to lay it behind there, like that. And then using my scissors, I'm just going to trim away that excess so you won't see that. It doesn't have to look good because you're not going to be able to see that once it's glued together. So there we go. I've got a little bit of that showing through on the heart. You can see it's pretty ugly on the back, but that's okay. And let's put that onto the heart like that. There we go. And finally, this whole panel is going to go onto that white mat that I made. So I'll just add a little bit more tape to that and pop it onto the panel. So now I have, let me straighten that out a little bit, <laughs> now I have my little window. The one thing that's nice about this particular tape is that it gives you a little wiggle room so if you don't nail it the first time you still have a little bit of time to pull it up and place it down again. So there, now I have my snowy window. Looks like you're looking outside. Now that is going to be layered onto this little combo. This is also from the Winter Whimsy Pattern Paper Pack. 
and this is a piece of red hot cardstock. So I'm going to combine these two. And then this panel is going to go right onto my white card base. So I'll put that on next. down a little bit. Okay, there's my base. Now I'm going to lay this out almost like it's a little puzzle here to make sure I like the way it looks. I'm going to put the window here. Let me put these two little pieces together. So I have my greeting. And then I think my greeting will go down here in this corner and then I'll lay my snowman right on top so that he's kind of, he just came inside to warm up a little bit and then he's going to go back outside in the snow soon. All right, so let's attach this up into that corner. And then... I think I'll put this one down using some of those quarter inch pop dots. And I'm going to just line those up along the bottom actually because I've got some layers here and I want it to stay kind of even. So I'll put the pop dots along the bottom and then the snowman will kind of secure the top of this panel when I put that on top. So we'll put the winter wishes there. And then We'll put the snowman right here. So, again, a couple pop dots for him. Move this one up a little bit. And we'll put him into place. Just like that. And there is my cute little snowman window card. A window can also be made easily using rectangle dies or even cutting a rectangle using your paper cutter. Then you can cut smaller rectangles and place them on your larger rectangle to create the look of a window pane. There are also other electronic cutters and dies on the market that have beautiful window designs that you can purchase. If you like the window design that I used here, you can visit the Silhouette store through your Silhouette Studio software and search for design number 8541.